But uh, the point is that this is a message for everybody else. I am quite old and uh, I have almost finished my career. I have published uh, 14 books, academic books on international law and politics. But for younger people, so this is a message, uh, uh, be silent, don't speak uh, against the mainstream and otherwise you will be cancelled or punished, sanctioned. Uh, so this uh, this is a sad uh, uh, side, uh, or, or side effect of, of my... Uh, Cancelling. Hello, everybody. This is Pascal from Neutrality Studies, and today I'm talking to one of Eastern Europe's most accomplished academics and public thinkers. I've got with me Dr. Rain Müllerson, the former president of the law school of Estonia's Tallinn University. Rain got his PhD in 1985 from the law faculty of Moscow University and went on to become one of the heads of the Institute of State and Law in Moscow and a direct advisor to Mikhail Gorbachev. In 1988, the USSR nominated Rain as a member of the UN Human Rights Committee, and after the collapse of the state, he became Estonia's first deputy foreign minister. Later, he became a professor at King's College London and held several other academic positions across Europe. Sadly, in September this year, Tallinn University stripped Dr. Mullison of his emeritus professor status because he attended the St. Petersburg International Legal Forum in Russia. Today, we want to talk first about academic freedom in Europe and later about the development of international law and how that goes together with the war in Ukraine. Dr. Millison, welcome. Thank you for having me, Pascal. No, thank you very much for making the time. Um, last week, I was speaking to a colleague in the United States, uh, Professor Postel, who um, had has big problems at the MIT with freedom of speech. And um, today I'm talking to you and you were, you had your status canceled. I mean, an emeritus professor means you are already retired, but they canceled that status of yours because, because you attended a conference. Can you tell us more why that is, what the, what the university argues and what this means for you personally? Oh, Thank you, uh, Pascal, for having me uh, here. Uh, I don't want to speak uh, too much about uh, my uh, personal uh, case, uh, but as it is uh, uh, reflects uh, rather uh, what is going on in many uh, uh, universities, uh, I would like to talk uh, uh, about my case and what's going on uh, the world in the academic world uh, in Europe, for example. Um, my case maybe is quite exceptional, and in the, uh, any case, I don't know that any other professor uh, has been cancelled uh, of his emeritus uh, uh, status. And certainly in Estonia, it was uh, for the first time, and uh, I participated in uh, the uh, in a conference in Saint Petersburg, and maybe. My bad luck was that I became too famous. I was in the panel together with the former president and prime minister of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev. And so it was um, uh, shown uh, uh, all over uh, Russia, of course, uh, the panel uh, meeting and even uh, uh, in uh, other countries in Estonia, which is very interesting uh, in um, itself. Um, because uh, Russian TV, uh, you can't watch uh, Russian TV or uh, any channels, uh, listen to the radio from uh, in Estonia, for example. In Britain, it is possible, uh, but not in um, um, when Britain, when I uh, where I live, uh, mostly it's possible, but not in uh, Estonia. But nevertheless, uh, many people <laughs> saw it uh, and mentioned uh, it. Um, and initially, uh, there, there was no uh, any ideas about uh, cancelling me or taking any sanctions uh, against uh, me. Um, uh, and uh, 
But then there was a letter, a letter of 17. The 17 uh, individuals from university wrote a very angry letter uh, that I had been in um, uh, aggressor state uh, and uh, uh, therefore they uh, demanded that my uh, honorary uh, status would be uh, cancelled. So I spoke to the rector of the university about it um, and to other uh, people in members of the Senate, and they believe that it is a bit uh, 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 not so serious at all. So the, the, uh, this was the initial uh, reaction, not only of uh, mine, but of uh, the uh, leadership. But then gradually, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, uh, issue was taken up by uh, the media uh, in Estonia. And you know, there is, um, uh, uh, I, I recalled uh, now what uh, William Yeats, uh, the famous Irish poet, uh, wrote. I believe uh, it, it was uh, after the First World War, <clears throat> uh, uh, he had a poem called The Second Coming. And uh, they are there are words, if I remember correctly, that the best lack all conviction and the worst are full of passionate intensity. This was the, the case probably. The majority, the best, uh, most of them didn't uh, want to take up uh, the issue and say, uh, with some exceptions, uh, very few exceptions, uh, to uh, defend uh, uh, academic uh, freedoms, while uh, the major, I mean, minority was very vocal, angry, and uh, therefore the silent majority uh, really went along with um, uh, this uh, issue, which initially uh, uh, the rector and others uh, believe that uh, uh, the Senate don't even discuss this issue, take uh, 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 this uh, letter of uh, 17 and simply put it aside. And uh, because uh, uh, the majority uh, really uh, remained silent and uh, the vocal minority went uh, very much ahead. So uh, this was uh, the uh, reason I was cancelled. So, um, and uh, uh, there was also, but uh, the result probably was uh, uh, very controversial uh, and uh, maybe counterproductive for those who were the initiators. I became very popular in Estonia, though I was quite well known when I worked as a first deputy foreign minister and at other posts in Estonia, uh, but uh, people have forgotten already about me uh, because my most of my career was uh, outside in Moscow and in London and in other countries. I worked for the UN for many years and uh, um, uh, I had a lot of support. Uh, uh, and one famous Estonian writer, um, uh, I, I was not personally familiar with him, he even wrote uh, an article in one of the newspapers uh, uh, when uh, he uh, wrote uh, that uh, uh, there's such a saying in Estonia and that uh, uh, Professor Müllerson uh, doesn't feel neither cold nor um, uh, heat uh, because of this, uh, or he doesn't care uh, simply uh, because of uh, this uh, cancellation, which in, in a uh, uh, way is correct because first of all, of course, I have uh, honorary professorships for, from several universities all over the world. Uh, from China even, uh, truly. I am Marco Polo, a professor in, also in Chantung University in China and so on, in Central Asian universities and in European universities uh, uh, as well. But uh, the point is that this is a message for everybody else. I am quite old and uh, I have 
almost finished my career. I have published uh, 14 books, academic books on international law and politics. But for younger people, so this is a message, uh, uh, be silent, don't speak uh, against the mainstream and otherwise you will be cancelled or punished, sanctioned. Uh, so this, uh, this is a sad uh, uh, side uh, or, or side effect or, or of my uh, cancelling. Yeah, I, I have a question about this or this observation that you are one of Estonia's most senior academics in the sense that you have accomplished so much and as you have been in the public eye for such a long time and then punishing you for something that is not a crime under Estonian law that there is no there's no provision that would prevent you from doing that you have not transgressed any legal uh, boundaries but there are people who feel that you've transgressed a norm that they want to be there um and they want obviously to chill the environment from others from emulating what you did um this this sort of peer pressure do you um do you contest that only for Estonia or do you think other parts of Europe are now going through the same where where people academics are getting afraid of actually going even a little bit astray in in terms of their publications or their thinking on let's say the war with Russia and between Russia and Ukraine uh, now uh, uh... There is one, uh, uh, the lawyers uh, for the university, they found um, uh, a clause. So, uh, 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 and this is that um, when the war started in uh, February uh, 22 uh, between Russia and Ukraine, uh, but if I may say uh, from my point of view, and is, this is also maybe not uh, the point of view is not welcomed uh, in Estonia or in the West, maybe generally, but particularly in the Baltic states of Poland, I would say, uh, not in the Western part of uh, uh, Europe, in the UK or uh, France. Uh, it's not, my views are not ex so exceptional uh, generally in uh, the West. It is that <coughs> I don't consider that this is a war uh, so much between Russia and Ukraine as between Russia and NATO countries and or Russia and uh, the West, the collective West as a, uh, as a whole. Uh, and uh, 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 that's one of the reasons why uh, I participated also in uh, this conference and other events uh, uh, in Russia because I am... Uh, 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 writing a lot um, about uh, these conflicts, uh, uh, the war in Georgia, for example, in the Balkans, um, and uh, now, now, of course, uh, in uh, uh, Ukraine, and not going to uh, the place at uh, participating uh, the, uh, in uh, conference events and speaking to the people uh, on the street, even not only to uh, those who participate in these uh, conferences. I believe uh, it would be... Uh, 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 simply unacceptable uh, for my research if I have such an op op opportunity to see with my own eyes uh, and to hear with my own ears what is going um, on. And I am a fluent uh, 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 Russian speaker, as you may imagine, being a, a, a Gorbachev's speech writer and advisor. So I can do it uh, uh, quite uh, well. And uh, I have friends uh, with whom I have dead at dead meetings um, and uh, it helps a lot uh, to understand better uh, the, the situation. But the, the, the point was that in 22, uh, uh, Estonian universities and the Tallinn University was the last one, by the way, in that they um, <clears throat> made a decision not to um, cooperate with uh, Russian uh, universities. Uh, uh, and we had, uh, uh, I, uh, when I resigned from my post um, uh, as a professor in, uh, at King's College in uh, London, at the London School of Economics, and I went to uh, Estonia, I taught uh, also in Tallinn University, and uh, 
and I taught mostly in English. Uh, and uh, uh, we had students from all over the world. Uh, uh, the Erasmus um, uh, uh, program was uh, there, and we had students from Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, uh, and uh, it, it was very uh, good and interesting. Uh, and um, uh, the universities, uh, Tallinn University at least, didn't want uh, to cancel these uh, contacts, which in my opinion, point of view is a, a very uh, uh, unhealthy uh, uh, to cancel uh, 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 this um, uh, uh, context. But this uh, decision was made under the pressure from media, from, um, I don't know whether it was governmental, but uh, uh, the situation in uh, society is such that uh, Tallinn University also uh, cancelled uh, these contacts and uh, there, aren't, uh, there aren't any uh, students uh, or professors coming from uh, Russia or uh, Belarus. This, this was the, the uh, point made that I had uh, uh, broken uh, this decision uh, to uh, seize contacts uh, with um, uh, uh, Russian uh, universities. So it was not even a university. It was a, a big uh, uh, legal forum uh, in uh, St. Petersburg. By the way, I would say that uh, in uh, Britain, it, it had a different. I had an experience already in the 1990s, at the end of the 1990s. Um, I have published, I believe, at least uh, 10 articles uh, in Israel, in Israeli uh, journals. And, you know, uh, they, there is this policy, in, uh, which is not a governmental policy, but nevertheless, uh, not to uh, 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 cooperate very closely with um, uh, Israeli um, uh, academics. Uh, and when I published my first, uh, it was in 1997, uh, probably, uh, a, a big article or a very important topic, I still remember, uh, missile with uh, nuclear warheads, their legal status. Uh, and I published it in Israel. Uh, and uh, I presented uh, this article uh, a couple of years later uh, uh, for uh, the... Uh, research assessment exercise, which uh, is uh, once in seven years, it was uh, then. And I was asked uh, uh, mildly uh, not uh, to present this article, would I have uh, some other articles uh, so to replace this one? I at first, I didn't understand why <laughs> this was a big article. And the, uh, the Israeli journal is one of uh, uh, CUP. Cambridge University Press uh, journals, quite prestigious. But then I understood that this was because of this Israeli contact. I, I, I insisted on uh, uh, having this article uh, uh, presented for this uh, research assessment uh, exercise because I uh, believe it is wrong not to cooperate with uh, uh, academics uh, and with uh, people who are against, let's say, Netanyahu's uh, even then uh, policies uh, and not to cooperate with them. Uh, so um, uh, uh, this, what about uh, uh, generally in uh, uh, Europe? Uh, yes, uh, of course, there is no... Uh, academic freedoms as uh, they uh, had existed uh, before uh, nowadays. Uh, this maybe uh, uh, my case is exceptional because I don't know anybody who would have been cancelled uh, uh, going to Russia or publishing uh, in uh, Russian uh, journals. Oh, it is difficult now. I haven't published, or I published before, but I, I haven't published uh, now. Uh, and uh, one of my articles, uh, the last article published in uh, uh, 2023, was published in uh, uh, a Mexican journal, uh, particularly because it was 
a bit uh, difficult to publish it in the West. And uh, it was also practically impossible to publish in such a way in uh, a Russian uh, journal. Because, of course, as I have written about uh, the conflict in Ukraine, there is no a party actively participating uh, in one way or other who hasn't violated international uh, law. Uh, so, uh, therefore, uh, 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 in that sense, but uh, of course, uh, there are uh, other uh, uh, reasons. And for, uh, for example, already for uh, to some years, uh, the, these are issues of uh, uh, gender uh, uh, matters, uh, transgenders, uh, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, J.K. Rowling uh, has been uh, uh, not cancelled because it is difficult to cancel her. Well, she has no post. Uh, she is uh, <laughs> the most famous uh, writer probably in uh, the UK at the moment, at, at least. But uh, but uh, uh, in France, I uh, remember. Um, uh, Sylvia Nagasinski, uh, a philosopher, I don't know whether people know, she is uh, also uh, uh, the wife of the from, from, uh, from a, a prime minister uh, of, uh, um, um, of uh, 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 France. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, her lectures were, were uh, cancelled because he had different views on sur uh, surrogate motherhood, on uh, uh, how it is called, uh, uh, medical assisted uh, procreation, uh, and uh, so on. Um, uh, and therefore, several of uh, lectures uh, were cancelled. And now, of course, the main uh, issue is uh, the attitude of uh, academics towards uh, uh, the conflict in the Middle East, uh, particularly, not so much uh, the war uh, uh, in uh, Ukraine, uh, but uh, the Middle Eastern uh, conflict. So, yeah, so the 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 idea of academic freedom is a nice idea but we it's suffering right now from the same problems that other public forums suffer from which is this this repression of non-conformist views in uh well in the west and actually as you pointed out in russia too it would be difficult to publish certain things now you have been an academic under the soviet system you did your PhD under the Soviet system, you've, you've experienced that, and you've experienced the transition over time. And, and, and do you think that today's academic environment, let's say in Western Europe, including Estonia, is in some way still is like comparable to what you experienced in the Soviet Union? Was the Soviet Union more restrictive? Um, can you, do you have any thoughts about this? Yes, so I have, of course. I think about it. Of course, I I uh, would say that uh, uh, the Soviet Union was more restrictive uh, than the West at the moment. I uh, it, it but uh, it is not a compliment uh, to the West because uh, for me in the Soviet Union and especially when Gorbachev came to power uh, for academics uh, it was a cup of uh, oxygen uh, uh, the, this uh, openness uh, 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 policy uh, and uh, you know uh, maybe uh, uh, one thing uh, I, I, I didn't think uh, then when I wrote my PhD and even doctorate, uh, there, there were two degrees, PhD, uh, doctorate was already in 85 and I became immediately uh, after that professor of Moscow University and, and uh, um, so on. Uh, it, it was in 85 when Gorbachev uh, came uh, to power. But before that, uh, I had written a very uh, technical essays, uh, articles, or philosophical. Uh, it was safer. 
Uh, and no, I didn't think about it. Maybe I am so a bit philosophically minded uh, in any case, and I wanted to go to uh, uh, faculty of philosophy, uh, philosophy at Moscow University when I uh, uh, ended my acad uh, not academic, uh, athletic career. I was quite a good high jumper in the Soviet Union. And uh, that's why I was in Moscow. Uh, and then I went uh, to a Moscow University to study law because somebody told me that philosophers, they, they don't have any jobs <laughs> to do. So, uh, and uh, I, I have discovered later, I thought that many, many uh, good Soviet academics, I, I don't speak about uh, physicists or chemists, uh, they, they were famous Nobel uh, Prize winners, uh, but uh, also philosophers, uh, lawyers, they wrote quite a, a lot uh, on uh, abstract, uh, uh, historical, uh, made historical uh, research. For example, my uh, uh, professor Tunkin from Moscow University had written his PhD on legal reforms in Great Britain uh, in 1830s. Uh, so famous uh, reforms um, uh, in uh, this country, in the UK. Uh, and uh, so this, uh, this was the situation I had done uh, the same, maybe following my uh, professor. Uh, and uh, uh, therefore, uh, but, uh, when the perestroika uh, period, uh, period started in uh, the Soviet Union, I became interested in uh, writing in on politically uh, sensitive uh, issues um, uh, already. So uh, there, there was no academic freedoms in the Soviet Union, I won't say. Uh, say. Though there were good academics and, um, uh, and you say, they, they were safe uh, 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 in, in, in being uh, rather theoretical uh, than uh, practical. Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, uh, when the Soviet Union uh, uh, collapsed uh, then in Russia and in other uh, republics, of course, there were uh, 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 many uh, more uh, uh, academic freedoms. But maybe what, what I think, what, what is uh, um, uh, uh, also uh, uh, present uh, here is that, let's say, Western European countries and the United States also, uh, there is a tradition of uh, long tradition of academic freedoms, though they have uh, uh, this has not been always absolute. Uh, I believe in the UK, I have worked, I worked here for 18 years. Uh, I had almost absolute uh, liberty to write and to say whatever I uh, wanted, and it was all uh, published uh, as well. Um, uh, but maybe in the former Soviet republics in Eastern Europe, there is something so uh, when people were uh, forced to look at the Kremlin uh, and to uh, uh, suppress uh, their uh, views, or simply to change them uh, as well, genuinely uh, uh, sometimes, there, there is this uh, habit. And when the Soviet Union collapse ceased to uh, exist, and there became, uh, uh, it was possible to express uh, different uh, uh, views, then uh, uh, the views accepted were on the other extreme, following, uh, I would say, Washington, Brussels, uh, and this habit of following uh, somebody uh, is still uh, there. And uh, therefore, I don't imagine uh, uh, that uh, King's College or London School of Economics would have cancelled uh, uh, me. They don't care even uh, about these uh, minor uh, issues. Uh, though, uh, uh, 
by not I mean, may, uh, mainstream uh, uh, publishers and uh, newspapers don't publish uh, often. You have to be Henry Kissinger or uh, John Maysheimer maybe uh, to uh, be heard uh, by may, uh, mainstream uh, media uh, sometimes. By the way, I would say that I am probably the only Estonian who can be uh, uh, who has uh, uh, published whose articles or interviews have been published on the war in Ukraine and which are very controversial. But nevertheless, there are uh, editorial comments uh, that, that, that then uh, uh, accusing uh, uh, me of being too close to the Kremlin, uh, uh, for example. In, and one documentary even shows that uh, I am a person who uh, almost writes for uh, Putin because not uh, I uh, repeat what he says, but uh, he repeats what I uh, uh, say. So because <laughs> I... I <laughs> I have been very famous in many Western universities, uh, uh, and so uh, therefore now uh, Putin follows uh, my advice.